the grim, ghastly ambience that welcomes you to Mbale Regional Referral Hospital extends to the mortifying wards plagued by congestion and shortage of specialized medical personnel and medicines. It is also plagued by poor sanitation as medical residues litter the compound, load shedding and medical personnel complaining of poor remuneration and delayed pay of salaries. For long spells, patients and caretakers have complained about the poor quality of services offered at the facility, but authorities are yet to respond. This conspicuous silence by authorities at the health ministry in Kampala and Bale City has emboldened the rise of deceitful practices at the hospital, especially bribery and extortion. When you go to the facility, you are forced to pay money. In fact, everything that you touch, I've ever taken there, my museum, he died from there. Everything you touch, hmm? uh, another lecturer from Makere here went here, died from there. Many, many people have died from there. But when you are there, what hurts uh, uh, the general public? You don't see these qualified people directing the juniors. I feel like it has been an issue with most of our health facilities. Sometimes most people are taking advantage of. Sometimes most certain specialties are not with some of our personnel who are manning those facilities. So those are some of the challenges. But I know that within our people, there are also fraudulent people who prefer making this reference to their facilities outside the, the, the facility for purposes of own uh, incomes and all that. This former patient at the hospital, who requested for his identity to be concealed, was involved in a motorcycle accident recently, which left him with a compound fracture. His condition could not be treated at any of the health center falls in Bolambuli and Namisindwa districts in eastern Uganda, upon which he was referred to Mbale Regional Referral Hospital. He spent several days at the hospital with little attention from medical personnel, a tactic they usually employ after he failed to offer a bribe. This is when good Samaritans showed up. He thought that they felt sympathetic for him and he was advised to relocate to a private clinic nearby for urgent care, which he consented to. So someone picked me to, then took me to, to Koma Hospital. That is Healthy for Life, is where I was worked from. At the private clinic, the patient underwent X-ray scans and an operation that included clamping his bones, which cost 1.5 million Uganda shillings. His caretakers were informed about the bill after the operation, which they struggled to raise. Three months down the road, the bone clamps snapped and his injuries degenerated. Scans conducted later showed that the first operation was poorly handled. For a new corrective operation, he requires 4.5 million shillings, which he does not have. Then this one got broken, so I was again brought back to the hospital. Again, healthy for life. So from there, they worked me again. They, boost, they told me to, to replace another metal, but they told me a lot of money, so I had no money. After receiving impassioned pleas from patients, we camped at Mbale Regional Referral Hospital to undertake an investigation. Constructed 98 years ago by the British Colonial Administration, today, the 415-bed hospital serves more than 15 eastern Uganda districts of Mbale, Mbale City, Busia, Budaka, Chibuku, Kapchora, Bukwo, Kwen, Butaleja, Namisindwa, Manafa, Palisa, Sironko, and Tororo. The hospital boasts of structures in fairly good condition, but chronically there are complaints about shortage of equipment and specialized personnel. Yet according to the health ministry, the facility is one of the most staffed among the 16 regional referral hospitals around the country. The recently retrofitted 22 billion shillings surgical complex at the hospital was supposed to offer some level of comfort to patients, but that remains a far cry. During two weeks of investigations, we established a cartel involving medical workers, doctors, nurses, clinicians, guards, and other attendants and administrative support staff at the blood bank that work directly or at private clinics situated a distance from the main hospital gates. 
This cartel, which conducts graft brazenly, has wrecked lives at this hospital. On Monday, authorities planned an operation under the velvet duck to ensnare a doctor at the hospital notoriously known for working with cartels to extort patients. However, he escaped the dragnet. The cartel, or syndicate, involves several personnel inside and outside of the hospital gates. The streets leading to Mbale Hospital's two entrances are dotted with private clinics, pharmacies and laboratories. Frequent times, patients and caretakers are referred to private facilities that ordinarily should offer complementary services but have turned into Shylock businesses. Our investigations discovered and established several things. First, there is widespread syndicating of patients by hospital staff to private clinics. Medical personnel inside the hospital often, deliberately, catalyze scarcity, claim specialized personnel or essential medicines are unavailable, forcing desperate patients and caretakers to seek the services outside. But it all starts with the self-effacing guards in the morning. They are polite to patients, but beneath this posture, they are identifying their targets. Using secret filming, we managed to document several examples. In the first experiment, my colleague checked himself at the hospital as a patient who needed assistance urgently. After being ignored for a few hours, the colleague was approached by an outwardly sympathetic guard who all along was lounging in the ward to our guests weighing vulnerability, offering to help. With the guard's assistance, he was facilitated to seek treatment across the crowded hallways. He was first taken by a nurse who asked for 1,000 shillings to buy a 32-page exercise book for registering details of his diagnosis. He was then sent to another room where a doctor immediately diagnosed him and sent him to a private laboratory for tests. At the laboratory, my colleague who has never complained of any symptoms of ulcers was diagnosed with acute ulcers. He took the results back to the doctor at the hospital, who referred him to the dispensary. Where the pharmacist said only paracetamol is available. For the other prescribed drugs, the pharmacist recommended a clinic where he bought the drugs. We also noted several patients being referred outside for drugs, which means the hospital was out of stock. But the National Medical Stores says they last delivered medicine supplies to Mbale Hospital barely two months ago on July 30th, meaning the stocks are still within the two months of their delivery schedule. It is true, uh, over time, a number of people have complained about uh, getting to the hospital and then they are referred for services out. It has been a concern over time. It has been uh, investigated to some level. And, uh, and when you ask National Medical Stores, they say they make deliveries of all the essential medicines that are required in the what? In the in the hospital. That is a striking mode where you have workers who are demotivated, they come late. When they come at the workplace, they are very rude. They beat the patients. Yes, this people they beat. They are very rude, they are disrespectful. So all those indicate that uh, the doctors from the time they say they were a, going into industrial action, indeed, the strike has never been called off. So all those are characteristics from a human resource perspective, the behaviors of workers who are demanding for a higher salary, the behaviors of workers who think they are underpaid. During the second experiment, we decided to follow other patients. For instance, this guard is seen here leading a caretaker to a facility outside and subsequently wheeling the patient out to the clinic to receive assistance reportedly not offered at the hospital. After receiving treatment, the patient is then wheeled back to the hospital to recuperate. Stephen Masiga, a researcher at Makerere University's Mbale Center, told NTV, this is a norm at the hospital. I think uh, we are told that one of the best in the region this acknowledgement from the health team, it is wrong to, uh, for example, do references uh, and an illegal reference for sure. It is an illegal reference. Illegal how? A hospital like Mbale Hospital, you only refer to Murago, to a similar 
government facility higher than you in terms of personnel and manpower and other things. So it is an egality and a, uh, an affront on all Ugandan laws for a, a health sector such as Mbari, a regional health facility to refer uh, a patient to a unit to, to quacks. Many of them are quack, quack doctors. But other doctors are unable to manage, isn't it? Then they refer you to Mbari Main Hospital. You reach Mbari Main Hospital, they are referring you to where? A clinic. This continues to happen as authorities shirk their responsibility. I've done a SWOT analysis. The first one was they have the structures, isn't it? Two, the, the second SWOT analysis that there is ability and willingness for government to commit funds to buy a regional hospital. That's why it is a regional hospital almost at the level of Murago. Actually, it is almost reaching there, much as that one is national. Three, they have the best manpower. But when you go there, it is unfortunate that you do not see many of these well-educated doctors in the facility. Instead, you see, <coughs> when you go there for treatment, you become a specimen where students of uh, the other university, Busitema, you, you become a learning kind of thing. So you see students learning on you, you expect the hospital to, to treat you uh, and what have you, but instead you become a learning uh, object. I think for some good time now, you realize that most of our health workers have been raising a number of issues towards their pay facilitation and the working conditions that are challenging us even at local government level. In as far as you may wish all the best, the situation that we find sometimes ourselves in becomes that difficult for us to manage some of those issues on our own. So I think the starting point is making sure that we, make, we facilitate our health workers. Some of them are good, but the conditions force them to act in a certain way. So you find the hospital crowded. However, it is not true that from day one up to maybe end of the month, we have no drugs. Uh, actually, in the regional far hospital, in every two months, deliveries are made. But of course, because of the influx of the people, uh, those drugs are consumed and eventually causes what people may say is a shortage. Uh, another thing where you say that uh, there is extortion, of course, to a certain extent I've also experienced that, but I've always uh, intervened it by linking up with the management of the, of the regional fire hospital to ensure the culprits are brought to book. After several days of prodding, a doctor at the hospital agreed to speak to us on condition of anonymity about how the syndicate works. So we work, of course, with the, most of the teams from the regional fire hospital ranging from the Ascaris to the cleaners, uh, to the clinic officers, to some doctors. So when these people send to us patients, actually at times they even bring them to us. They come, they bring the tests to be done. Then we take them to where we do the tests and then they pay the money and they are given our permission. So, we actually even work and connect with some of the staffs in the main hospital. Usually the Ascar is our workmates. The source intimated that the scheme starts every day in the morning with the guards undertaking client reconnaissance. The Ascar is our big time partners because they are the ones in touch with the hospital patients. They are the ones who are closer to them to the hospitals. So they are the ones that deal for us and bring the patients for us and get them from the Ascaris. The hospital, they tell him, ah, ah, there are no doctors here. Let us take you outside where there are doctors. These ones are fake doctors. So they bring them to us and then work on them. So they smuggle them from the hospital. They staff themselves, pick them and bring them outside for us and then we work and we take them to private hospitals where they are worked on. The commission is dependent on how much the private facilities charge the patients. For instance, if a patient undergoes scan or scans, laboratory test or tests, and prescription at the same time, all the three services attract a commission for the referee. Uh, the issue of blood, what we do, of course, when we write a request form, 
we go to the blood bank, we deal with the staffs there. They ask for us some money, from us some money, we pay, and they give us the blood. So, some money is paid before we get the blood. But still, the, we will go to the lab, asking for the blood, they will say something before we give the blood, so we pay the money. At times we pay 20,000, at times we pay 50,000, but in the time rent is too scarce, no blood at all. You pay 80 or 100,000 shillings to get the blood. In the aftermath of the fallout of the arrest of the former Mulago National Referral Hospital's Executive Director, Baterana Biarogaba, President Museveni directed the National Drugs Authority to immediately close all private pharmacies operating within government health facilities. In Bali, it is good business. Apparently, you do not see uh, proper monitoring carried by a team, either occasional, either regular. You see, once in a while, irregular visits. Mm? So we would expect that there must be a mechanism of tracking and following up. Because when Diana Twin was uh, under State House, the health monitoring team, she discovered most of, most of these things that you are talking about. So they, now that she's the PS, it is a, it is, she's a PS with, given the knowledge she had in the past, she must be able to activate uh, such concerns that she had into her officer so that there's a follow-up, there's a constant supervision. The Mbale city mayor told NTV the malfeasance is widespread. And I can tell you that we are going out to buy gloves, simple gloves that you think must be in the facility. And that is a, a, the National Referral Hospital. Now we are here at the, at the regional referral. Same conditions will always appear. That yes, you'll find someone who has all this, but what it takes for him to do the job, sometimes it's not there. And you reach there as a local authority, you would wish that this must be done, but the person challenges you and shows you that this is a situation I find myself in. What do I do? So it is something that we do not want to heap blame to health personnel only, but I think it has to do an element with us and the people who are planning for these facilities. We have done, but we have not done what, because it would be, make a lot of sense for us to penalize individuals and personnel who are involved in this, but you must have also done your part of the bargain. Newly graduated doctors take the Hippocratic Oath before they are released to the public to use their knowledge and skills for the good of humanity. The oath binds doctors to protect patients by upholding professional integrity at all times, to do no harm, to care for the patient, and to maintain the utmost level of confidentiality, even in death. But with the country's ailing health sector peppered with a population explosion, poor pay, and long hours of work, ethics are often discarded. Specialist doctors who are paid a pittance at government hospitals usually dovetail practice at private facilities where they are paid better wages while others completely switch to private practice with improved remuneration. You know, of course, definitely, the people who always want to take advantage of these situations have to move closer because the people know that the people are being referred to either buy drugs or go and do certain tests outside where where the hospital they cannot handle. So all that is actually opportunities that have been created by this inadequacy within our facility that is making people now move closer and put, you've seen a number of laboratories that are there, you cannot tell them, don't put them there, because I mean then what will, do, what will happen next? It's a business, it has become a business, I think. So like it is always that people take advantage of what is there. And you want stopping it, must, they must have an alternative. We mounted set, uh, an, an operation here to look for such quaker uh, clinics. And uh, of course, you, you, you mount an operation today. They wait for one week, there is no follow up. They come back. But of course, it's there. But we are also not sitting back. In some quarters, medical personnel have attributed such conduct to poor remuneration and delayed payment of salaries and allowances. There is more to the story at Mbali Regional Referral Hospital, with the perennial absenteeism of specialized personnel. Medical interns are filling the void, which is also an issue of concern. Sources revealed that syndicates rely on private vehicles to sneak patients from the hospital to outside facilities, where they are coerced to undertake x-ray and scan services.
This is another tale in regard to the country's ailing health sector, which lacks equity, leaving poorly equipped, crowded hospitals with barely any drugs to millions of poor citizens, while those in the upper echelons, who earn the highest salaries and perks, are given a special vote to attend first-class treatment outside the country, a practice akin to medical apathy.